Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay and with me is Renuka with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact with startups tomorrow via video conferencing. Startups from various sectors like agriculture, health, enterprise systems, space, industry 4.0 security fintech and environment to be part of this interaction commerce minister piyush goel calls upon global venture capital funds to focus more on startups from tier 2 and 3 cities country's overall exports in december 2021 estimated to be 57.87 billion us dollars reflects positive growth of more than 25% over same period last year but the session of parliament to commence on january 31st first half to run from january 31st to february 11th and second half from march 14th to april 8th over 155 crore 39 lakh doses of covid-19 vaccines administered under nationwide vaccination drive railways ministry pays all ex gratia amounts to the family of deceased and injured passengers in kohati bikaner express train accident notification issued for the first phase of assembly polls in uttar pradesh Monumental national flag made of khadi fabric to be displayed at Indo Park border Longewala in Jaisalmer tomorrow on Army Day Makar Sankranti Bihu and Pongal been celebrated today Ayush Ministry hosts first ever global Surya Namaskar event on the occasion Australian government cancels top tennis player Novak Djokovic's visa for the second time and in cricket South Africa beat India by 7 wickets in Cape Town test to win three match test series to one As the number of COVID-19 cases is rising fast in several parts of the country we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others including children between 15 and 18 years get vaccinated With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe Wear a face mask maintain two gas ki duri for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene for any covid related information and guidance contact national health and numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075 and now the news prime minister narendra modi will interact with startups tomorrow at 10:30 am via video conferencing the prime minister has been a firm believer in the potential of startups to contribute significantly to the growth of the nation This was reflected in the launch of the flagship initiative Startup India in 2016. The government has worked on providing an enabling atmosphere for boosting the growth and development of startups. This has had a tremendous impact on the startup ecosystem in the country and has led to a staggering growth of unicorns in the country. More from a correspondent. The startup from various sectors such as agriculture, health, enterprise systems, space, industry 4.0, security, fintech and environment will be part of this interaction. Over 150 startups have been divided into six working groups based on themes. These include growing from roots, nudging the DNA from local to global, technology of future, building champions in manufacturing and sustainable development. Each group will make a presentation before the prime minister during the interaction. The aim of the interaction is to understand how startups can contribute to the national needs by driving innovation in the country. A week long event celebrating innovation ecosystem is currently underway from 10th of this month. The event is being hosted by the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, Ministry of Commerce and Industry as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. The event marks the 6th anniversary of the launch of the Startup India initiative. Anand Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. Earlier during his Man Ki Baat program Prime Minister Modi had said that India is leading in the world of startups today and startups are getting record investment year after year स्टार्टअप की दुनिया में आज भारत विश्व में एक प्रकार से नेतृत्व कर रहा है साल दर साल स्टार्टअप को रिकॉर्ड निवेश मिल रहा है ये क्षेत्र बहुत तेज रफ्तार से आगे बढ़ रहा है यहाँ तक कि देश के छोटे छोटे शहरों में भी स्टार्टअप की पहुंच बढ़ी है आपको ये जानकर बेहद खुशी होगी कि अब यूनिकॉन्स की दुनिया में भी भारत तेज उड़ान भर रहा है एक रिपोर्ट के मुताबिक इसी साल एक बड़ा बदलाव आया है सिर्फ दस महीनों में ही भारत में हर दस में एक यूनिकॉर्न बना है ये इसलिए भी बड़ी बात है क्योंकि हमारे युवाओं ने ये सफलता कोरोना महामारी के बीच हासिल की है 
कॉमर्स मिनिस्टर पीयूष गोयल हैज कॉल्ड अपॉन ग्लोबल वेंचर कैपिटल फंड टू फोकस मोर ऑन स्टार्टअप्स फ्रॉम टीयर टू एंड थ्री सिटीज ही वॉज शेयरिंग द फोर्थ राउंड टेबल विद ग्लोबल वेंचर कैपिटल फंड ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द डिपार्टमेंट फॉर प्रमोशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्री एंड इंटरनल ट्रेड एज पार्ट ऑफ द स्टार्ट अप इंडिया इनोवेशन वीक इन द मीटिंग इट वॉज पॉइंटेड आउट दैट इंडिया इज होम टू ओवर सिक्सटी वन थाउजेंड रिकग्नाइज स्टार्ट अप्स स्प्रेड अक्रॉस फिफ्टी फाइव इंडस्ट्रीज इट वॉज हाईलाइटेड दैट फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ दीज हैव इमर्ज फ्रॉम टीयर टू एंड थ्री सिटीज एंड फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ स्टार्ट अप्स हैव एटलीस्ट वन वुमेन डायरेक्टर विच इज अ टेस्टमनी ऑफ डायवर्सिटी स्प्रेड एंड इंक्लूसिविटी ऑफ द इंडियन स्टार्ट अप इको सिस्टम मिस्टर गोयल सेड दैट द गवर्नमेंट हैज ऑलरेडी टेकन अ नंबर ऑफ स्टेप्स टू सपोर्ट द स्टार्ट अप्स एंड वुड डू सो इन द फ्यूचर ऑल्सो ओवर सेवेंटी फाइव वेंचर कैपिटल फंड इन्वेस्टर्स फ्रॉम यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स जपान कोरिया सिंगापोर एंड सम ग्लोबल फंड डोमिसाइल्ड इन इंडिया टुक पार्ट इन द डेलिबरेशन द कंट्रीज ओवरऑल एक्सपोर्ट्स मर्चेंडाइज एंड सर्विसेज कम्बाइंड इन डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन आर एस्टिमेटेड टू बी फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट एट सेवन बिलियन यूएस डॉलर्स एक्जिबिटिंग अ पॉजिटिव ग्रोथ ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव पॉइंट जीरो फाइव Overall imports in December 2021 are estimated to be 72.35 billion US dollar exhibiting a positive growth of 33.86% over the same period last year. India's overall exports merchandise and services combined in April to December 2021 are estimated to be 479 billion US dollar exhibiting a positive growth of 36.31% over the same period last year. The budget session of the parliament will commence on January the 31st. The first half of the budget session will run from 31st of January to 11th of February. It will reassemble on 14th of March to sit until 8th of April subject to government exigencies. The government will present the budget for fiscal 2022-23 on 1st of February. The winter session of the parliament concluded on 22nd of December, a day ahead of schedule. The government has said that a total of 5,753 cases of Omicron variant of COVID-19 have been reported so far in the country. This is an increase of 4.83% since yesterday. The Union Health Ministry today said that over 155 crore 39 lakh doses of COVID vaccines have been administered in the country under the nationwide vaccination drive. The ministry said more than 73 lakh 8,000 COVID vaccine doses were administered in the last 24 hours to the beneficiaries. More than 1 lakh 9,000 COVID patients have recovered during the last 24 hours, and the national recovery rate stands at 95.20%. More than 3 crore 48 lakh patients have recovered from COVID-19 in the country so far. The country reported over 2 lakh 64,000 new COVID cases in the last 24 hours. Currently, India's active case load is over 12 lakh 72,000. The ministry said more than 69 crore 90 lakh COVID-19 tests have been conducted so far. Health and Family Welfare Ministry has termed some media reports baseless and misleading wherein underreporting of COVID-19 deaths has been claimed. There have been some media reports alleging a significant undercount of the actual number of people who have died in India due to COVID-19 in the first two waves, claiming that the final toll may be substantially greater, crossing the figures of about 3 million. Health Ministry has said these reports are not based on facts and are mischievous in nature. The Union Health Ministry has said that fully vaccinated person has a lesser chance to get infected with COVID-19 including Omicron. In an exclusive interview to AI News, Joint Secretary in the Health Ministry, Lav Agarwal said, evidence clearly indicates that fully vaccinated person has also a lesser chance of hospitalization and getting severe infection. it is vaccine along with the social vaccine the use of mask physical distancing it is this vaccine which is going to be our biggest support the evidence clearly indicate that if you are fully vaccinated you have much lesser chances of getting infected including even omicron evidence also clearly indicate that if you are fully vaccinated your chances of hospitalization are much much lesser and you do not get severe infection so i would really submit to everyone that it is critical that as and when the vaccines are made available and you are eligible kindly get yourself fully vaccinated mr agarwal said government is taking all the necessary steps to expand the coverage of covid-19 vaccination he urged the people to come forward for the vaccination 
Full interview with Mr. Agarwal can be listened to in the Spotlight program today at 9.15 p.m. onwards on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies. In a bilingual live phone-in program, Corona Jagrukta series, Dr. Raman Sharma, Senior Professor of Medicine, SMS Medical College, Jaipur, will be with us today to answer the queries related to coronavirus. This live program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. Listeners can ask questions to the expert from 9.30 p.m. on telephone number 011-2342-1230 and 011-2342-1764. You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at EIR News Alerts by hashtag Ask EIR. This program will also be available on our website news on EIR.nic.in and on our YouTube channel News on EIR Official. Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Mansuk Manvia said that teleconsultation is a boon specially for primary health care in a pandemic like situations. Dr. Madhya today visited e-Sanjeevani Hub at the CGHS headquarter in Delhi and reviewed teleconsultation services. He said e-Sanjeevani is a revolution in the health sector in the country and it is providing affordable and accessible health care as envisioned by the Prime Minister. In the pandemic, the doctor has to go to the hospital. He has to go to his home and go to the e-Sanjeevani platform and go to the expert doctor's opinion. सभी स्टेट के साथ मैंने प्रत्यक्ष बात की है देश में कुल मिला के तीन हजार ऐसी ज्यादा आज हब बन चुका है वहाँ एक्सपर्ट डॉक्टर बैठते हैं डॉक्टर मानविया सेड दिस डिजिटल इनिशिएटिव इज बूस्टिंग द डिजिटल हेल्थ इको सिस्टम इन द कंट्री He said the Prime Minister had highlighted that telemedicine facilities will help in providing health care services to the needy. He urged people to make more use of these digital platforms during the COVID-19 pandemic, which enables to get immediate consultations from healthcare professionals in the comfort of their homes. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact with startups tomorrow via video conferencing. Startups from various sectors like agriculture, health, enterprise systems, space, industry 4.0, security, fintech and environment to be part of this interaction. Commerce Minister Piyush Goel calls upon global venture capital funds to focus more on startups from tier 2 and 3 cities. Country's overall exports in December 2021 estimated to be 57.87 billion US dollars, reflects positive growth of more than 25% over same period last year. Budget session of Parliament to commence on 31st of January. First half to run from 31st of January to 11th of February and second half from 14th of March to 8th of April. Over 155 crore 39 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered under nationwide vaccination drive. Railways Ministry pays all ex gratia amounts to the family of diseased and injured passengers in Guwahati Bikana Express train accident. Notification issued for first phase of assembly polls in Uttar Pradesh. Monumental national flag made of khadi fabric to be displayed at Indo Park border Longewala in Jaisalmer tomorrow on Army Day. Makar Sankranti, Bihu and Pongal being celebrated today. Ayush Ministry hosts first ever global suit in a mascar event on the occasion. Australian government cancels top tennis player Novak Djokovic's visa for second time. And in cricket, South Africa beat India by seven wickets in Cape Town Test to win three match test series 2-1. to one. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग हेतु तो संपर्क करें आठ 
चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वेलकम बैक यूर लिस्निंग टू द इवनिंग न्यूज रेलवे मिनिस्टर अश्वनी वैष्णव सेड अ प्रिमिनरी इंक्वायरी इन टू द बीकानेर गोहाटी ट्रेन मिस एप शो द दे माइट बी अ ग्लिच इन द लोकोमोटिव इक्विपमेंट डिटेल इन्वेस्टिगेशन इज ऑन टू लुक इन टू द इश्यू एट दिस नाइन पैसेंजर्स डाइड एंड फिफ्टी फाइव इंजर्ड वेन ट्वेल्व कोचेज ऑफ द असाम बाउंड ट्रेन गॉट डी रेल्ड नियर दोमोहानी इन वेस्ट बेंगोल लास्ट इवनिंग द मिनिस्टर हु विजिटेड द मिस एप साइट सेड द कमीशन ऑफ द रेलवे सेफ्टी इज कंडक्टिंग एन इंक्वायरी टू फाइंड द रूट कॉज बिहाइंड द एक्सीडेंट मिस्टर वैष्णव सेड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेन्द्र मोदी इज मॉनिटरिंग द सिचुएशन ही एडेड मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रेलवे इज पेड ऑल द एक्सग्रेश अमाउंट पेमेंट्स इन द शॉर्टेस्ट पॉसिबल टाइम टू द नेक्स्ट ऑफ किन ऑफ दोज हु लॉस द लाइफ इन द ट्रेन एक्सीडेंट एज वेल एज टू द इंजर्ड The railways has paid an excretion amount of five lakh rupees each to the next of kin of nine persons who have lost their lives in the accident. In case of grievous injuries, an amount of one lakh rupees was paid to ten persons each. Twenty-five thousand rupees was given to twenty-six persons who sustained simple injuries. The Tri Services Court of Inquiry into the MI17 V5 chopper accident on December 8 has submitted its preliminary findings. The accident took lives of 14 people, including CDS Bipin Rawat. The inquiry team analyzed the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder, besides questioning all available witnesses to determine the most probable cause of the accident. The court of inquiry has ruled out mechanical failure, sabotage, or negligence as a cause of the accident. The accident was the result of entry into clouds due to unexpected change in weather conditions in the valley. This led to special disorientation of the pilot resulting in controlled flight into terrain based on his findings the court of inquiry has made certain recommendations which are been reviewed election commission of india has decided to double the broadcast and telecast time allotted to each national party and recognize state parties in poll bound states the steps were taken in consultation with prasad bharti in view of the covid-19 pandemic and enhanced relevance of non contact based campaign broadcast and telecast time will be doubled on doordarshan and all india radio during the ongoing general election to the legislative assembly of goa punjab manipur uttarakhand and uttar pradesh the order states that a base time of 90 minutes will be given to each national party and recognized state party of goa punjab manipur uttarakhand and uttar pradesh the facilities will be available from the regional kendras of all india radio and doordarshan The process of assembly polls in Uttar Pradesh has begun today with the issuance of notification for the first phase. The state will go to polls in seven phases from 10th of February to 7th of March. During the first phase, the nominations can be filed till 21st and the scrutiny will be undertaken on 24th of January. The last date for withdrawal of candidature will be 27th of January and the picture of the electoral contests will become clear at that stage. In this phase 58 assembly constituencies including 9 reserved for the scheduled castes will go to polls on 10th of February the total strength of the house is 403 out of which 84 seats are reserved for the scheduled castes and 2 seats reserved for the scheduled tribes presently there are 9 vac- vac- vacancies in the house the congress released its first li- list of 125 candidates yesterday The Samajwadi Party and Rashtriya Lok Dal Alliance have also announced the names of 29 candidates. The BJP Central Election Committee has also finalized the names of its candidates in a meeting held in New Delhi during the last 3 days and will release the list soon. The Bahujan Samaj Party has announced that it will not forge any alliance in the state and that it will contest the polls on its own. Former ministers in Uttar Pradesh government Swami Prasad Maurya and Dharam Singh Saini formally joined the Samajwadi Party today along with six other MLAs and supporters. Meanwhile, the police have filed an FIR against the Samajwadi Party at Gautam Pali Police Station in Lucknow for violating moral code of conduct and COVID protocols during the virtual rally where a large crowd had gathered. The Election Commission has announced a total ban on rallies and gatherings till 15th of January. In view of the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic and rising cases of Omicron variant across the country, the Election Commission has laid focus on COVID-safe elections with maximum participation. 
The monumental national flag, which is the world's largest national flag made of khadi fabric, will be put to a grand public display along the India-Pakistan border at Longiwala in Jaisalmer to celebrate the Army Day tomorrow. Longiwala was the center stage of the historic battle between India and Pakistan in 1971. The flag, which symbolizes the collective spirit of Indianness and the heritage artisanal craft of khadi, has been conceptualized and prepared by the Khadi and Village Industries Commission (KVIC) to celebrate Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav, 75 years of independence. The KVIC has handed over the flag to the defense forces for displaying the same at prominent places on historic occasions. And now let's listen to our special program Azadi ka Safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. Azadi ka Safar with AIR News. Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of this struggle every day. In today's episode, we remember revolutionary freedom fighter Masai Manjuran who died on the 14th of January 1970. A dynamic trade union leader, Mathai was jailed for months for taking part in the Kisan Labour Movement soon after his graduation in 1933. Later, he was imprisoned several times during the freedom struggle when he formed the Kerala Socialist Party. He was twice prohibited from entering the erstwhile princely. Manjuran became a member of the Legislative Assembly, winning the election from the Madai constituency in Kannur, Kerala. He also became a member of the Rajya Sabha in 1952. In 1967, he became Minister of Labour and held the portfolio for two years. He continued working for the welfare of people till his death in January 1970. AIR salutes the great nationalist. We also remember eminent writer Mahashweta Devi who was born on the 14th of January 1926. She used creative expression as a tool to fight for the rights of the oppressed people. Shweta Devi was born to poet and novelist Manish Ghatak. Her mother Dharitri Devi was also a renowned writer and a social worker. Mahashweta Devi was influenced by her childhood association with Gananatya, a group who attempted to bring social and political theater to rural villages in Bengal in the 1930s and 1940s. After finishing her master's degree in English literature from Calcutta University, Mahashweta began working as a teacher and journalist. Her first book Jhansi Rani The Queen of Jhansi that was published in 1956 traced the history of the growing resistance to the British it is a very personal history of Lakshmi Bai an unusual woman widowed at an early age who grew from a free spirited child into an independent young leader she is showcased as a far sighted leader full of warm concern for her soldiers as well as a mother who worries about her infant son's well-being her 
1977 novel Aranyer Adhikar Right to the Forest was based on the life of tribal freedom fighter Bhagwan Birsa Munda. It chronicled the turbulent period of the late 19th century and particularly the tribal armed uprising against the British. Mahashweta Devi published 20 collections of short stories and close to 100 novels primarily in her native language Bengali. Her most notable works are Hajar Chorasir Ma, Rudali, Murti and Aranyer Adhikar. Over the course of her life, Mahashweta Devi was felicitated with several awards for her contribution to the literary world, such as Sahitya Academy Award, Gyanpeet Award, Ramon Magsese Award, along with India's Civilian Awards, Padma Shri and Padma Vibhushan. We salute the great champion of common people. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark Gold Jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404. Issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. Jago Grahak Jago. Makar Sankranti, Bihu and Pongal have been celebrated in various parts of the country today. On this auspicious day, the Ministry of Ayush hosted the first ever global Surya Namaskar demonstration program as a part of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav. More than one crore people participated in the global Surya Namaskar program. The Surya Namaskar is a set of eight asanas performed in 12 steps with coordination of the body and mind. All leading yoga institutes, both from India and abroad, participated in this worldwide program. Australian government has cancelled tennis superstar Novak Djokovic's visa for the second time today. It is also sought to deport him after he arrived in the country without a COVID-19 vaccine. The cancellation effectively means Djokovic would be barred from a new Australian visa for three years except under certain circumstances. In cricket, South Africa defeated India in the third and final test at the Newlands in Cape Town today to seal the series 2-1. The host chased a 212-run target with seven wickets to spare as Keegan Peterson top scored with 82 for the side and was ably supported by Rassi Venda Dusen, Captain Dean Elga and Temba Bhavuma. Two-time Olympic medalist PV Sindhu and World Championship bronze medalist Lakshya Sen advanced to the women's and the men's single semi-finals at the India Open Badminton in New Delhi today. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow in the national capital Delhi. The minimum temperature will be 7 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 16 degrees. In Mumbai, the minimum temperature will be 19 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 29 degrees. The city is expected to have mainly clear sky. Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will vary between 24 and 31 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have fog or mist in the morning and partly cloudy sky later. The city will observe a minimum temperature of 15 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 24 degrees. Srinagar will have partly cloudy sky. Jammu will have mainly clear sky. Leh is likely to have partly cloudy sky and Gilgit will have clear, generally cloudy sky. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact with startups tomorrow via video conferencing. Startups from various sectors like agriculture, health, enterprise systems, space, industry 4.0, security, fintech and environment to be part of this interaction. Commerce Minister Piyush Goel calls upon global venture capital funds to focus more on startups from tier 2 and 3 cities. Country's overall exports in December 2021 estimated to be 57.87 billion US dollars. reflects positive growth of more than 25% over same period last year but the session of parliament to commence on January 31st over 155 crore 39 lakh doses of covid-19 vaccines administered under nationwide vaccination drive railways ministry pays all ex gratia amounts to the family of deceased and injured pass- passengers in guwahati bikaner express train accident monumental national flag made of Khadi fabric to be displayed at Indo Park border Longewala in Jaisalmer tomorrow on Army Day in badminton PV Sindhu and Lakshya Sen advanced to the women's and the men's singles semi-finals at the India Open tournament 
And in cricket, South Africa beat India by seven wickets in Cape Town Test to win the three-match Test Series 2-1. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.